This episode, we take an in-depth look at the newest ship in the Cunard fleet, the Queen Anne. Set to launch in 2024, it promises to mesmerize, beguile, and dazzle you with a new twist on two centuries worth of elegant cruising. Welcome back to the Ritzy Travel Guide. My name is Bill. It's great to have you along with us. And this episode, it's all about the new fourth ship in the Cunard fleet. What will the ship look like both inside and out? Will there be new restaurants? And I have great news for you on that front. There will be new restaurants. More on that in a little bit. We're also going to take a look at how Queen Anne differs from existing Cunard ships. After that, we'll see what itineraries will be on offer and at what cost and where you can sail to. And the question most people are asking, will the Queen Anne see a new evolution in the design and look of Cunard ships because they haven't changed for quite a while? And it's been a while since there were four. People often think that Cunard must surely have more ships than that, but it's been three for quite a long time. In fact, the last time there was a new ship in the Cunard fleet, it was way back in 2010 with the launch of the new Queen Elizabeth. I name this ship Queen Elizabeth. Our full preview of the Queen Anne coming up is going to be a fascinating episode. Let's bring you up to speed with the construction. And there's been a buzz of activity at the Fincantieri shipyard near Venice in Italy. It's the third Cunard ship that they built. Earlier this year was the floating out ceremony, or what some call the first launch. There was a bottle of Prosecco aimed at the hull, lots of photos and press shoots, and then she rushed into the water. The way cruise ships are built is actually in sections, what is called a mega block. It's a bit like Lego. Here is the footage of the section of the ship being launched. It's fascinating to see how it all goes together and then separately floated out for testing. As such, ships effectively get launched on a few occasions during the build. This lower section is called a troncone. It must make for an unusual sight for those watching it go by. And a couple of months ago, there was the funnel lift. In this case, the iconic Cunard red and black funnel. So what's it all going to look like? Let's listen in to the design team and what they're trying to achieve. With the Cunard brand, you're all expecting this superior level of service. And I think with the design, your expectations are gonna be exceeded even more. Queen Anne doesn't really compare with anything else that we've designed here at David Collins Studios. A lot of brands try and borrow that heritage, but Cunard really invented the golden age of travel. While that all sounds exciting and promising, but what's it really going to feel like? And for that, Cunard have released some artistic renders. With Queen Anne coming 14 years later, it's got everyone wondering, is Cunard finally going to have a change in look? Here we can see the main atrium, and right off, you can see Cunard is going for a more contemporary feel. Quite different, especially from the current Queen Elizabeth and the QM2 also carrying through to the famous Queen's Room. The ballroom has had a complete makeover. And these are the renders for the main Britannia dining room, still with sweeping cathedral ceilings, and here for the grill restaurants. And each grill restaurant gets its own look, including the Britannia Club. And a new grill's terrace, exclusively for the Princess and Queen's Grill suites, an alfresco dining and drinking area. The chart room also gets reimagined, as does the spa. And we've been promised a major revamp for the pool area. Looking much closer, dare I say it, to the celebrity edge class of ships. Oh, and here's another interesting development. Cunard is linking up with the British Film Institute to show movies under the stars. Well, more specifically, in the new Queen Anne pavilion area by the pool, it doesn't matter whether it's raining or it's sunny, because the retractable roof will cover you. You'll be able to lie back on your recliner, cocktail in hand, watching the latest blockbuster or riveting documentary. They're also heavily promoting the new Bright Light Society, which appears to be a jazz club come performing arts venue. And they're promising it will be like nothing Cunard has ever seen before.
I don't think it's aiming to be quite as racy as a Virgin Voyages cruise, but let's see. Right, now let's see what new restaurants they're talking about coming for the Queen Anne, because there haven't been any new restaurants on Cunard for quite a long time. First off, there is Ajiwa, a brand new concept for any Cunard ship that will offer creative Japanese cuisine. Guests can enjoy sushi, a la carte lunch and dinner menus, with the option to take part in omikaze, which is a chef's choice tasting menu in the evening. Now, omikaze is normally very expensive on land, so let's see how Cunard prices it on their ship. And the next speciality restaurant launching is Aranya. In fact, they mention whisking you off to the bazaars of Delhi, no less. They claim that menus are curated by experts in the field, providing a multi-sensory experience. It's interesting to see that Cunard is finally offering an Indian speciality restaurant, because many other cruise lines have been doing so for years. Yes, there has been a sort of pop-up version of Indian on Cunard, where a little section of the buffet at night turns into a quasi-Indian restaurant, but it's only a couple of days a week and it's not a dedicated one. This is the first time, finally, that Cunard is putting an Indian restaurant aboard. About time, you might say. Now, here's a slightly confusing one, because they mention a new steakhouse, even though Veranda has been available on all Cunard ships for a while. This one they're calling Sir Samuel's, which is slightly confusing because on the Queen Mary 2, Sir Samuel's is a coffee and cake house. This one is promising steak and seafood in a salubrious setting. Let's see if it winds up being any different from the veranda. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up as it lets us know we're on the right track and you'd like to see more of this type of material. And the final new speciality restaurant is Mediterranean themed and is called Tramonto which they say takes guests to the sun-kissed shores of the Mediterranean. They even mention bringing the salty tang of the sea. With a menu filled with fresh flavours, guests can enjoy dining al fresco, taking in the beautiful sunset on a warm summer evening. Now that last part caught my eye. When they say al fresco, not sure, is this an indoor restaurant, outdoor restaurant, or halfway between the two? If you have any further information on any of these speciality restaurants above and beyond what I've just mentioned, it would be fantastic to hear from you. Please leave your comments in the box below. Now, before we leave the subject of food altogether, Michel Roux, he, the famous chef from La Gavroche restaurant, has been brought aboard to conjure up something new for the Golden Lion Pub. Queen Anne's alternative dining offering is really exciting, and I am thrilled to be part of it. I'll be curating some fabulous dishes for the Golden Lion Pub, a rustic yet refined reimagining of great pub classics. The Golden Lion Pub is one of Cunard's signature venues, but on board Queen Anne, it's been reimagined. I can't wait to sample all that's on offer and to share my plans with you. So I wonder how much of the menu Michel Roux is really going to change because die-hard fans who for years have been going to the Golden Lion for their famous fish and chips, their pies and their chicken tikka masala, if those are suddenly cut from the menu, there might be a riot on Cunard's hands. Let's see how it pans out. I know what you're thinking. We haven't looked at the cabins yet. How have they been reimagined? Well, a lot more modern. Let's listen in to the designers. The Queen's Grill Suites, we want them to really feel like a private apartment. They're slightly more open plan. They've got really nice residential touches, such as low level lighting. And then in the living spaces, we worked very hard on the furniture layout so the furniture could rotate, whether you are watching TV or you can rotate the chairs to be more of a social. The bathrooms, they're more like small private spas. They have definitely moved more contemporary. Inside cabins, here is the ocean view, those for the Britannia Club, and the Princess Grill, and the Queen's Grill cabins. It's certainly a departure from existing Cunard ship cabin design. Are you a fan or not? Drop your comments below. Incidentally, welcome news on the technology front, finally, for Cunard. 
You might have read that Elon Musk's Starlink internet connectivity has been rolling out to various other shipping lines in the past year or so, and Queen Anne will be launched with it from scratch, and the other Cunard ships will be getting it in phases by the end of 2023. We've been on a couple of other cruise lines this year that already have Starlink aboard, and trust me, it makes a huge difference to connection speeds. So who will be the new captain of the Queen Anne? Well, she's a delightful lady called Inga, who hails from Denmark, and she's been with Piano and Cunard for some time. To be the first captain of Queen Anne is just such an honor. I'm so immensely proud. I'm so looking forward to seeing how Queen Anne is gonna be welcomed in every port, by our guests, by everyone. There's such a huge interest. The luxury, the freedom, the elegant environment. But still, with the new design, which takes us to the future, I think it's gonna be an amazing journey. First time taking Queen Anne out to sea will just be a magical moment, and it will be such an historic moment. I tell you what, as Cunard has been deliberately a little bit secret about it, there have been people all around the globe trying to imagine and speculate what she'll finally look like, going to the extent of knocking up computer renditions. Some of these are based on ship plans that have been released, and some on press circulars. Here you can see the covered dome roof that's on the specifications. The Queen Anne, incidentally, isn't a totally new ship design. It's part of what they call the Pinnacle Class. And as Cunard is part of the Carnival Corporation, some of the ships right across their ownership share hull and superstructure designs. So a pretty good way to imagine how Queen Anne will look is to look at some existing pinnacle ships, especially those from Holland America. The Koningsdam and Rotterdam, to name a couple, are also pinnacle. This, minus paint differences and a couple of other design changes, will be very much how Queen Anne looks. Now let's take a look at how Queen Anne stacks up to Cunard ships present and past. Is she the biggest, tallest, widest? Let's take a look, and for a bit of fun, we'll start off by going backwards in time, starting from the 1900s. There's lots of famous ships, household names that we all remember from our history books, such as the Carpathia, the nearest ship to the Titanic who helped out. And then the Lusitania, which was gunned down by the German fleet in World War I. I've put the statistics in so you can compare. And here's the original Queen Mary, and you can still visit her in Long Beach, California. Also interesting to remember that the Queen Mary had a length of over a thousand feet, almost exactly the same length as the new Queen Anne will be, and that was 90 years ago. And here's the original Queen Elizabeth. The ship was eventually sold on after Cunard, but sadly sank in Hong Kong after a fire in 1972. And then the QE2, which is now retired and in Dubai, which you can stay on or visit as a hotel. And here's the big one of them all, the Queen Mary II, the largest ever Cunard ship. Still in service and a length of over 1,132 feet but a passenger capacity of just 2,695, which is a fantastic size to passenger ratio, which is why the QM2 hardly ever feels full. And here's the Queen Victoria, almost the baby of the fleet, as she carries just over 2,000 passengers, but again with a great passenger to size ratio. And the current Queen Elizabeth, which I suppose could have been called the QE3, but for some reason they didn't. Let me know in the comments if you know why they didn't and almost identical in size and capacity to the Victoria. And here we go, the Queen Anne. Bigger, and the second largest in the fleet with a length of 1,058 feet and 3,000 passengers. Now in a little nod to years gone by, Cunard have released a handy little sketch showing how the Queen Anne compares to previous ships. It's rather whimsical and fun, mentioning some of the landmarks in Cunard's history. I'll leave the PDF file in the description in case you want to download it and read it at your leisure, or print it out and put it on a poster. Oh, and concerning afternoon tea, of course it will still be alive and kicking and definitely front and centre on Queen Anne, but just to help you out, Cunard have released a little video talking all about etiquette and whether you've got the right stuff. Let's have a peep. They talk with Captain Hashimi of the QM2. What order would you normally do this in? Um, usually I would go bottom up and uh, working my way up the yeah. uh, selection that's, tray. That's exactly what I would do. So that sandwiches, then the scones, and then last day uh, with, the, with the cakes. So Captain, now we move on to the scones. My question to you is, Captain, what do you do? Do you 
do cream or jam first? I've always gone as a simple sailor for jam first. How handy is that? Now, if you've got nothing better to do and want to watch the full-length version, I'll give you the link at the end of this video. So as we mentioned, Queen Anne has her maiden voyage in May 2024. And for those who are inclined to immediately get online and book something special, here's a little look at what's available. Here we go, here's the maiden voyage, which will be a seven-nighter to Lisbon from Southampton. And to be brutally honest with you, it's probably not the most interesting cruise to be on, as it only goes to one place, Lisbon, and spends four out of the seven days at sea. So possibly catch one of the later cruises. There's a Canary Islands cruise in May, there's the pricing from almost $2,000 and upwards. And then for the balance of the year, Queen Anne will be in Europe. Now, if you want to start going further afield, that all begins in 2025. And that kicks off with an 11-nighter transatlantic from Hamburg to New York. Or if you want to make things even longer and really push the boat out, get on on January the 7th and you can go on the Queen Anne Maiden World Voyage, which runs from January until April the 29th. How much is that going to cost? Well, here you go. Starting at $17,000 and change, right up to $93,000 for the Queen's Grills Suites. Room for thought. Raid the family piggy bank. Raid the family vaults. So Queen Anne launching in May 2024. Is she totally new? Is she totally radical? Well, based on the renders and the information we've been given, I'd say for the first time in many, many years, Cunard is finally presenting us with something new. Rinsey Travel Guide will be aboard the Queen Anne in 2024, so remember to stay subscribed and notified to our channel so you know when those videos drop. It's going to be a fascinating review series. Will you be on the Queen Anne when she launches in 2024? Let us know in the comments box below. Oh, and I promised you earlier on the link for that Cunard etiquette class at Afternoon Tea. I've put the links in the description for you. Incidentally, don't forget we have many videos on the Cunard ships on our YouTube channel, as well as many other cruise lines. So do take a look at our playlist to watch a lot more. And you can watch those here. We'll see you in those.